After you've built your forecasting model, it's really important that you evaluate its performance. However, there's so many metrics out there, it's hard to know the right one to use. In this video, I plan to go over six different metrics, both forecasting specific and also just normal classical metrics, along with their pros and cons, so you can choose the right one for your case. Let's get into it. We'll begin with the classical ones, and the first one is mean absolute error. This one's quite simple to understand. All it is is the absolute difference between the actual forecasted value, all summed up, divided by the number of values we forecasted for. The pros of this metric is that it's very simple and intuitive to understand, and the error is also measured in the same units as the forecasted value. The cons are is that it doesn't penalize outliers if that's something you need for your forecast model, and it's also scale dependent, so it's very hard to measure this performance across other time series. The next one we'll discuss is mean squared error. This is very similar to the mean absolute error, apart from when we take the difference, we now square it, sum them all up, and divide by the number of values we forecasted. For. The pros of the mean squared error is that we're gonna penalize outliers a lot more because we're now squaring them if this is something you need for your model. The cons of mean squared error is that now since we're squaring it, it's harder to interpret what the error really means, and it's also still scale dependent, and so it's still difficult to measure this performance compared to other time series. The final classical error metric we're gonna consider is root mean squared error. So like mean squared error, we're gonna square the differences and then sum them up and divide by the number of values we forecasted for, However, for this final metric, we're then going to square root it, and this will take the error back to its original units that we originally forecasted in. The pros of root mean squared error is that we're still punishing outliers a lot, which is something we may need for our model. We are also now in the original units of the forecast, whereas before for mean squared error we weren't, and it's kind of like a best of both worlds between mean absolute error and mean squared error. The cons are that we're still less interpretable because we're still squaring the errors. So the final value is not necessarily that intuitive measure of what the error really means. And we're also still scale dependent. So it's hard to compare this error to a performance of another time series model. Now let's move on to the forecasting specific metrics. And the first one we'll consider is mean absolute percentage error. Now this is just a difference between the actual and forecasted value, and this is often the baseline metric we use when building forecasting models. The pros of mean absolute percentage error is that it's easy to interpret because it's a percentage, which also makes it scale independent so we can compare it to other models and other time series. The cons of mean absolute percentage error is that we can get an infinite error if the actuals are near or around zero. It is also a biased metric because under forecasts are capped at 100%, whereas over forecasts can go to an infinite error. The next one we'll consider is symmetric mean absolute percentage error. Now this is an extension of MAPE, however it removes the limitation of MAPE in that it is not negatively penalizing under forecasts. The main pro of MAPE is what I just said in that it is no longer biasing for under forecasting over over forecasting. The cons of MAPE is that there's still a chance of getting infinite errors when the actuals are near or around zero. It's also no longer that intuitive because we have a percentage or a value that's bounded between zero and 200%. And finally, it's not really that symmetric as it doesn't treat over forecasting and under forecasting errors the same. The final metric we're going to consider is mean squared logarithmic error. Now this measures a form of ratio or the relative difference between the actual and forecasted value as you can see on the screen here. The pro of mean squared logarithmic error is that it punishes under forecasting more than over forecasting, which is useful if that's something you need in your time series model. The cons of this metric is that it's not very interpretable because of our logarithm effect and also it can lead to division issues when your value or your ratio is near or around zero. Let's quickly summarize the key points we discussed in this video. So being able to evaluate your, your forecasting model is really important. However, it's quite difficult because there's so many metrics, like in this video, I have to give you like six. But the main point I wanna drive home is that no metric is better than the other and not one size fits all. The main thing I really want you to understand is that depending on what you're trying to gain with your forecast depends on the metric you choose. For example, if you really want to punish outliers in your forecast, then use either mean squared error or root mean squared error. 
Or, say if you want to treat over forecasting and under forecasting differently, you may want to use MAPE or mean square logarithmic error. Again, it depends on your scenario and what you're really trying to do. That will basically determine which metric is best for you to report on. In practice, and what I use in my day job, I like to report on multiple metrics because that gives you a more of a global picture of your model and to see where it's lacking and doing really well. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about time series and forecasting, make sure you check out our other videos in this playlist. Also to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.